So hello everyone, hello uh, Miguel Lopez, and thank you for uh, accepting to join us in uh, for this informal conversation on, on Formal West. We are now in the middle of the of the research for this uh, um, long-term project uh, that is taking us in a in a in a journey that is. Well, has already been going on for two years, and uh, we're envisioning, envisioning um, at least three more years um, of work, where we try to look at this construction, this cultural historical construction of the West, and trying to analyze its relevance and its status and its uh, its dynamics in today's world. Um, the starting point, the intellectual starting point for uh, uh, for doing this was the year 1989. Um, and that implies that the, the primary understanding of the West that we were uh, putting under pressure in the project was uh, the West of the Cold War uh, era and of the Cold War logics. So the West understood as the... Um, as the constellation, um, as the coalition of, uh, uh, of of countries under American hegemony, to be to be very very, um, to put it in, in in short terms and in very direct terms, so basically those countries that uh, accepted this hegemony first and foremost, um, and with everything that uh, that it entailed, so uh, um, the liberal democratic. Um, political uh, regime in many of the cases, but primarily the uh, capitalist model in, in, uh, in their economies. Um, after the, the, the demise of the Cold War uh, and with the, the, the new alignments that occurred everywhere in the world in the, in the last uh, two decades, um, the stability of this construction of the of this West has uh, has seriously been, I mean, can, should seriously be put under question. Uh, but there's another West that is not entirely uh, separated from the Cold War West uh, that one can then that, that one immediately thinks about when when uh, one utters this word, and that is the West of a uh, that that has a, a longer historical life and is the, the Imperial colonial West, something that we can identify well, from you know, very early on in, in European history, but something that has become a, um, a relevant um, agent in, in world history, at least from the, uh, from the 15th and 16th century. Um, and these two um, variants of the... Of, of, um, of, of empires under under the construction of West have been um, are, are in a very very intimate and solid relationship, so it's very difficult to separate um, the West of the Cold War from the from the powerful colonial military Eurocentric and North American um, um, colonial West. Um, but both of them have been in different degrees and in different ways of 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 of, uh, um, of devolving in the last uh, in the last decades, as I said. Um, but one can also argue that this apparent devolving is just a, um, um, a symptom of a rearrangement that is going on, a rearrangement of powers, a rearrangement of hegemony, a rearrangement of, of cultural elements that nonetheless uh, configure uh, a, a survival of a, of a Western model. Um, that can either happen through the adoption of su such models on different geographical and geopolitical lines, um, or it can it can very well describe uh, a realignment of, of the manifestation of this hegemony. Um, it can encompass sort of a, a different way of, of, of writing a hegemonic history that has nonetheless uh, the West or its, 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 its manifestations as the main character. And to sort of like uh, cut it short here, 
Um, I wanted to ask you, since you in the last year have been involved in a, has been uh, have been involved in a, in a in an impressive number of projects that have all had uh, as a common de denominator a kind of uh, almost as a mission, I would say, <laughs> of um, yeah, revisiting or reevaluating the basis of of. Uh, uh, of the construct of, of uh, the art historical narrative of Latin America, or actually to be more specific, of the Andinian countries, this is almost like a almost like a, a, a new construct that you're um, referring to somehow mm -hmm. in, in, in many of your projects. So, from the perspective of your of your work and of all your projects, how does our premises of the former West how how do they work for you? How are they useful and how, how do you relate to them? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, first of all, thank you for the possibility to talk. <laughs> it will be like a, a Spanglish talk, but it will be well, fine. That's a, <laughs> a, probably a symptom of what we're uh, yeah, dealing with here. Exactly, exactly. A different, uh, well, a different manifestation of the, of the cultural hegemony of the West, of the, yeah. uh, the, the British Empire and the American <laughs> Empire. Uh, uh, the relic, the yeah. English language, we're but it can also be a tool of subversion of the yeah, yeah, order. Yeah, of course. Well, we're talking about in, in the empire language now, but it's okay. Um, um, well, it's a, it's a complex uh, panorama that you put on. It's, uh, I have some ideas in my mind now. I, I will take, for example, um, that one of the possibilities that we have now I mean, after the 1989 situation, is to recognize uh, uh, how uh, this kind of uh, dichotomy uh, related to the Cold War no? between uh, Marxism and capitalism, let's say, uh, was under the umbrella of uh, this kind of rationalist uh, discursive construction, you know. And, and this is pretty clear now when we have, for example, uh, important indigenous insurrections uh, in countries like uh, Colombia, for example, or Bolivia in Peru last year. And they are demanding a completely different uh, political and social hypothesis, you know. Uh, uh, for me, it's a very important situation because they are uh, demanding a different thing. Uh, they are not trying to be part of the orthodoxy uh, left uh, movements or the Communist Party. They are just uh, addressing uh, some questions about h how this uh, rationalist and modern uh, Western modernist construction uh, uh, overlooked uh, other ways to 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 build to construct community. You know, um, I think uh, one of the legacies that we have now, uh, of, uh, after 20 years of, of this mark of 1989, is 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 the possibility to recognize uh, this uh, uh, renewed uh, political. Uh, uh, movements, but not aligned to the to the former uh, dichotomy. Um, we it is really interesting now because for uh, from the late eighties uh, we have now also in Latin America uh, a completely new panorama of uh, projects where we are trying to deal. Uh, with with this uh, uh, n new cultural horizon, uh, for example, in Peru there is an important project, the Micro Museo project, mm -hmm. led by uh, art historian and curator Gustavo Buntings. Uh, is this kind of ambulatory project, this uh, mi promiscuous museality, as he called it, when the when the impure and the contaminated aspect of culture encounters. Um, and 
how uh, and, and it is really interesting because, for example, this micro museo project uh, understand art as one of uh, the in just as one of the ingredients of a new visuality, you know, a new aesthetic, a popular aesthetic, uh, uh, this kind of mestizo aesthetic, you know, in the encounter of the dominant cultures and the popular emergent experiences. Yeah. Um, in, in Paraguay, for example, we have a, another important uh, experimental in museum, the, the Museo del Barrio, led by Tizio Escobar, uh, who is uh, also put import, putting important questions about this uh, label of contemporary art. They are trying to uh, they, they are uh, using uh, completely different uh, ways to, 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 to construct this collection they have. And they are talking about, uh, for example, uh, uh, they talk about urban art, indigenous art or popular art, and how these uh, different uh, horizons develop their own contemporarity, you know? And yeah. how, how uh, aesthetics I is a building other, other ways to understand contemporarity. Um, there is also Im important uh, projects, initiatives in Bolivia now, or in Ecuador. And I think uh, it is not also casual that uh, these um, Andean countries has been a part of this kind of uh, transnational uh, readings of uh, the so-called Latin American art. Uh, if you see, for example, the last uh, big surveys of our continent, uh, you you will see. I mean, the you you you, you will see the, the missing of Bolivia or Peru mm -hmm. or, or <coughs> Ecuador. Paraguay, because I, I think in this uh, in this context there's a, a this this kind of a, a, un, unresolved uh, uh, discussions uh, also in Argentina and Chile, but in the, this in these uh, countries I think this this uh, situation is a bit repressed. You know, it's uh, in in Argentina is this kind of uh, uh, situation of. Uh, Euro immigrant of Europe, European immigrants, and, and or in Uruguay, for example. But but in Peru now, for example, the discussion is 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 alive. It's really really important. Also because of the indigenous uh, uh, revolts are putting these questions in the political agenda. You know, in the whole country. Um, but if you, because uh -huh. you were mentioning um, this particular discussion between uh, how, how to how to relate a, a kind of normative and and maybe even um, a Western construction of, of, of a Western construct of, of, of contemporary art versus or maybe not versus, but in relation to. Mm -hmm. uh, vernacular manifestation of 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 of. of, of uh, Popular art and, and having a, a, a particular relationship with with mm -hmm. um, indigenous tradition of representation mm -hmm. and, and, and forms of representation, and well, trying to um, to place this discussion on the background of, of, of our discussion with uh, with the West, I would want to bring in, in 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 the discussion here something that is. Well, has been recurring many times in also in the first former West Congress that we had in, in uh, 2009 in Utrecht, uh, and that is the Magicien de la Terre exhibition that coincidentally took place in 1989 as well in, in, in Paris, mm -hmm. um, which well, um, on one hand can be dismissed as the as the as the uh, utmost mani manifestation of something that we, we can call high postmodernism, where uh, you know, uh, a variety of things from w w with very different um, um, cultural backgrounds and being part of very different temporalities and, and, and spatialities as well could be brought together under this this 
under the umbrella of this paradigm of, the, of, of high postmodernity. But it was, but the discussion that it, it actually created were were, um, were were emerging different different fields and different actually areas of debate mm -hmm. uh, in relation to how to this particular reconciliation or this particular uh, uh, way of associating uh, um, a Western discourse of contemporary art and different ways of locality, different mm -hmm. manifestation of, 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 of local forms of representation. Mm -hmm. um, so how would you... Um, how would you sort of like relate to, to these sort of like forms of like entanglement between uh, contemporary art, uh, a contemporary art canon mm -hmm. and different forms of like uh, different, different forms of, of, of local forms of, of, of representation from the perspective of a, uh, of a of a sort of like of, of, of this debate that takes place in in, in a Western context of of, of post-colonial, but related to the Magicien de la Terre. Well, no? not necessarily to okay. Magicien de la Terre, but with let's say with a certain kind of follow-up or a certain kind of like discussion that takes Magicien de la Terre uh, in discussion or takes Magicien de la Terre as one of the starting points. Mm -hmm. um, and how do this do this? Um, examples that you brought up from mm -hmm. uh, from from the different Andinian countries, mm -hmm. not to not to say Latin American countries, because of course mm -hmm. this would never like make sense in Argentina, uh, or would mean something else in Argentina. Maybe it would actually make a lot of sense if, but maybe it would be impossible yet to actually happen at this mm -hmm. at the same level in Argentina. Um, so how do do these projects sort of relate to it? How do they take? How do they relate to to, to a sort of a post-colonial discourse, a Western post-colonial discourse? Well, it's a <coughs> okay. It's a it's a complex question. Uh, I will say, for example, uh, you were talking about the Magicien de la Terre uh, at the same time of the of the same year uh, in 1989. There was a third edition of the Habana Biennale, you know, and the Habana Biennale, uh, since the beginning in 1984, uh, created this uh, political and intellectual debates, you know, uh, disengaged from the market, from the art market, trying to trying to think about this situation directly, because the Habana Biennale creates. Uh, uh, is created as a, as an in uh, under the of course the the socialist uh, government you know under the umbrella and the support of the socialist government and trying to trying to trying to uh, uh, confront create friction with this uh, uh, um, Im imperialist discourse as was it called it and um, creating links with uh, Middle East, with Africa, and with Asia, which is really important. And, and in, in this, uh, in this uh, Biennale, in the, in the first three, three editions, there were a lot of discussion about this. And, and, and also relating to the, to the artesanía, you know? Uh, yeah. And to the popular arts, yes, to, to design. The craftsmanship. The craftsmanship, exactly, to, to, to popular art, to, to design. And um, I think, for example, this is one of the one of the important spaces of discussion at that time of, of this, uh, uh, and a lot of uh, people uh, from Latin America at that tendency to to these uh, dialogues, and I think this is, as I said, one one of the important like uh, thinking laboratories. Of, uh, the continent at that time, and but it, w it was difficult to, I mean, to 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 be out of this uh, socialist framework mm -hmm. uh, developed since the triumph of the Cuban Revolution in in like three decades before. If you think, for example, our 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 uh, between the 60s and the 80s, uh, 
the, the guerrilla insurrections. No, we are trying to trying to took the power and trying to uh, uh, um, create this kind of socialist uh, community, and it was very difficult. For example, in Peru, we have a, I mean we we have a terrible war in the eighties. In 1980, uh, the El Partido Comunista del Perú Sender Luminoso, the Peruvian Communist Party, Shining Bad, declares the war against the state. And they were trying to, I mean, they were, they believed that they were doing the people's war. And they yeah. want to, uh, want to release, uh, I mean, the, 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 the peasant oppression and, and the, and they were working, uh, in, in the interior of Peru, but if you see from far, you you can uh, see how, how this um, um, uh, the, the how the the colonis the colonization of the discourse is is working there, because at the same time from the seventies and on, you you have this kind of uh, new uh, cholo. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what is the translation of cholo. cholo. Well, <laughs> but you know. I guess, I, yeah, I, I guess there wouldn't be necessarily a trans well. It's one of the the many ways to approach uh, uh, to, to 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 describe a, a mestizo condition. I yeah. guess in, in in English there there aren't all these nuances. I guess uh, cholo is also translated through mestizo. Mestizo. Well, I guess yes, it could be, be mestizo, yeah. exactly. But this is yes, com a completely renewed uh, way to understand and to work and to participate, you know, in in, in the public sphere and in the in the in the in the social, and 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 this was and the, this this uh, genuine uh, cholo emergence of of experience of culture of politics uh, was interrupted from this uh, colonized discourse of the. Of the shining path, no, trying to impose this uh, Maoist um, uh, state or Maoist uh, no mm -hmm. situation, and 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 you see there this this conflict. I mean, to 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 uh, to 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 I don't know the word <laughs> to to. Say in Spanish. To, uh, para, para, para acceder, to, to access, to, 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 to accede to, to, to the accede, power, or yeah. to, 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 to grab the power. Yeah, to, to, but not the power, to, to grab, uh, you know, uh, to, I, I'm trying to think how difficult it is for these uh, new popular emergencies to, 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 to set, you know, in a in a in a in a context when you have different layers of modernity mm -hmm. and of ideology, uh, also in o obviously in countries when you have this kind of strong legacy, the colonial yeah. sorry colonial legacy. So what you're basically suggesting is is, is that also a certain uh, understanding of, of 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 Maoism was also like can be perceived as a kind of colonizing discourse. Of course, yes. I mean, in in a way. I, I think we, we, we should make a critique about about this, and I was uh, I was trying to talk about this uh, uh, rationalist umbrella, you know, uh, related to the opposition uh, or the fight Marxism uh, capitalism, because okay, it makes sense here, you know, but if you if you if you see the complexity of 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 of, of the South, no, of the of the countries that suffer the, the colonial situation, there is a completely different layers and, and other uh, political and social hypotheses that has that have been repressed, mm -hmm. you know, with this uh, Western modernity. When this Western modernity was tried to be imposed, you no, know, um, 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 most of the time this. Uh, Imposition was uh, with with a very violent forms. Yeah. Um, because there is this kind of. And like this this is something that was also reproduced in the, let's say the, 
the official or like the most accomplished so far emancipatory project from this kind of, uh, I mean, in the West, from this kind of imperial, imperialist dimension of the West, which is the, the, the sort of Marxist project. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, on one hand, the, 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 the Western imper imperialism imposed itself through violence uh -huh. in Latin America, mm -hmm. but also like what the West created in its realm as the, the, the most sort of um, uh, elaborate so far emancipatory project Ideal, from, yeah. from this uh, uh, um, imperialist dimension mm -hmm. uh, has also uh, entered, at least the case of Peru, but certainly many other yeah. parts of, of, of Latin America, also through violence. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is part And is this something that sort of like applies to all the sort of like um, do, do you think that this is something that, that applies to all other um, um, variants of criticality that, that, that can come through the West, like through all the, 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 the discourses of, of, of denying this sort of, uh, or, or of, of deconstructing um, the West? Like, do you think that this applies equal also to, to, to well, of course, not equally. I mean, we're, we're talking now about intellectual uh, mm -hmm. dimensions. But do you think that the, the same crisis of, 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 of legitimation uh, would apply also to, let's say, a Western-generated post-colonial discourse, or through to a certain kind of like criticality that, that stems from 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 contemporary art in in when in, in, in applying them to a to an Andean context? Do you think that? I don't Such know if a you crisis would be there. Very well. I, I don't know if I. Get no, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to make a sort of like a very far-fetched analogy between, let's say, the the the, the violence of the encounter between the the um, on one hand the the, the Western imperial uh, presence okay. in, in 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 the Indian context, mm -hmm. and then the very violent uh, immersion in that context of the. Of of, of 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 Marxism and of different um, mm -hmm. uh, communist projects, and I'm trying to make then this this the analogy between this and and also of of different other critical projects coming from the West. Okay, um, be it post-colonial studies, be it this criticality that that sort of like developed and refined around contemporary art in the last decades or one decade and okay. a half. Um, do you think there is this inadequacy or this lack of legitimacy when applying these uh, Western-generated models uh, in an Andinian context? Do you uh, think that there is the need for some kind of like uh, nativist or indigenous uh, uh, purist um, critical model to be adopted? Okay. And uh, first of all, I, I will say that um, uh, s some of the Marxist uh, projects were violent. In, in just to to, um, to 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 be, I mean, to I, I don't like to to make generalizations. In this case, I was talking about the the Peruvian Communist Party, um, mm -hmm. who is a Marxist, Leninist, Maoist, no, uh, project. Uh, in, in other countries, we have uh, this kind of guerrilla, guerrilla situations. Um, okay, but related to the um, to the to your question, um, I will say, uh, from the eighties until now, there was a, a lot of uh, important attempts to cr to create this uh, post-colonial debate uh, in Latin America. I don't know if if post if the post-colonial label is the, the most accurate word to think this. Um, but for example, the, the subaltern studies, uh, you know, mm. in Latin America yeah. related to the Asian group of subaltern studies was an important attempt. But in the last decade, maybe, uh, it is also important that the project uh, led uh, by a group of intellectuals in like uh, the Peruvian sociologist Aníbal Quijano, the Argentinian Walter Mignolo, uh, and other people are working about the what they call the um, 
the the colonial project um thinking how uh, the coloniality is the dark side of the modernity you know uh they I think this uh, this uh, debate uh, from the 90s until now has been growing up a lot, no? And from native perspective, in in, in Ecuador there is now a um, like a postgraduate program led by Catherine Walsh, which which is really important, and also we have. For example, Bolivian sociologist Silvia Rivera working mm -hmm. a lot in La Paz. Um, also, Tizio Escobar in Paraguay, and a lot of people. I, I think, for example, um, th that that these local debates are in friction with with the, the with the per Western perspective of the postcolonial okay. debates, you know. And, it's and what what is this friction? Where where can we see this? Where where, where does this friction occur? Along what uh, arguments or in what? Well, I I, I guess it's um, mostly related to uh, the the Eurocentric construction of modernity, and because this, this Latin I mean Latin American intellectual are trying to 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 to, to think uh, an, another a modernity process, you know, not uh, in the in the not a line of of the of the. Western ra rationalist uh, construction of history. Um, but I think, I mean, it, in what we could call sort of like post-colonial studies, mm -hmm. I mean, this critique of the of, of, of the, the, the Western constructed model of modernity is uh -huh. already present. Uh -huh. So I mean, this this critique is already there, and it's quite central uh -huh. to what we can call, you know, sort of, and what is being. Uh, uh, what can be defined as the as the post-colonial studies in in, in Western academia? Uh -huh. So then, why the friction, or like uh -huh. where where can you see that such friction? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. I I, w I, um, I mean I'm I'm not an expert of European uh, Western yeah. post-colonial, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> me neither. Um, this is not. Uh, I was thinking now, for example, in a in a in a in a in a recent project. Uh, the Museo Travesti del Peru, the Travestite Museum of Peru, who is a, is a project um, led by a philosopher, Andras Quinn, Giuseppe Campuzano, and it's like a reread of the Peruvian history from the perspective of the, the cross-dressing from the travest, travesti, from the travestite. And for me it's a for example, an, an interesting attempt to to put some question on this uh, history that we are used to when the protagonist is the nation, you know, because and this is interesting too. Uh, Boris Groy has important ideas about this. When, when the, this uh, internationalist utopia, uh, the communist, uh, fell in 1989, you know, you have a completely new panorama when the protagonist is the nation, you know? Yeah. Like the beginning, like begin with the nation and end with the nation. And, and Groys asked how to create this kind of transversal historiographies uh, to feature this uh, perfect uh, uh, history of the nation, no? And I, I think he he's a, he has a very good point there. Um, and I was thinking now in this Museo Travesti del Peru because it's a it's this kind of transversal lecture of 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 the history of Peru when you, for example, has a one element like the feather, you know, the feather, the la feather. pluma, yep. exactly, and and you can uh, you can have a, a, a historiography. Who connects Manco Capac, the Inca, you know, and yeah. and and people dancing in 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 in, in Puno, no, in the interior of Peru, these uh, uh, folkloric dances, for fol uh, popular dances with these uh, and androgynous androgynous um, costumes, no, when the 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 
the the the, the personage, no, this the, the character the character has no sex, you know, it's this kind of androgynous. And I mean, from Uncle Capac to these uh, popular dances to this, uh, I don't know, drag queen from the cabaret last week, you know, this, uh, and how different elements are, 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 um, can, can, can uh, feature, can make a whole, no? Uh, and create a completely new connections, no? Um, um, and to, to, Put down. What is the word? To to to, to come on, like um, say, say it in Spanish. Uh, como derribar. How to derive? Well, How in to, a way, to, I mean, to, yeah, the, this uh, the, the the republic, the history of the republic, you know, in in Peru, because uh, in in in, the, in this uh, in this scenario, in this new scenario that the Museo Travesti is creating, is a. Uh, it's, it's allowing the possibility of the emergence mm -hmm. of, 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 you know, of di dif different uh, historiographical, like micro historiographical uh, lines. Mm -hmm. And it is, uh, for me, it's really exciting. I mean, for example, um, to, 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 to think about this now. Um, I'm not answering your question, I mean, to, to, to friction to the, to the West yeah. and post-colonial, but but uh, but this is an, an like this kind of experimental m m museality who appropriates with the idea of the museum, who is also one of the uh, colonial instruments per excellence to classify, you know, the other, yeah. no? And he's he's uh, uh, make the, making this make, making this appropriation uh, and to and to make a parody because the, this kind of uh, tra travestism, you no, know, the travestite is, is also this kind of simulacro, no? When you when you adopt uh, a, a different uh, character, and he he was he he said all the time that the Peru is a is a travesti, you know, because uh, and he's trying to see the different layers, you know, hiding in this uh, perfect idea of nation because under this uh, notion of the nation uh, they are committed a lot of uh, atrocities and violence for example uh, I, I think from my perspective that one of the most dangerous things for the state for the Peruvian state now related to these indigenous insurrections are that they are not trying to define themselves as a Peruvian citizens you know they are just uh, they they don't want to be part of this uh, national society they are uh, uh, making a demand yeah. of their own uh, lands of their place they live and i think for the state this uh, uh, this uh, is uh, they, they they try in a way to to make them citizen to mm -hmm. civilize them civilize them to, to civilize them, that's yeah, uh, one way of. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I yeah. maybe exaggerate. I'm exaggerating with the word. It, it uh, sounds is this to be a bit like uh, to, to 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 maybe stretch it a bit. But is this sort of like a, a, a also a rejection of like a Western uh, construction of citizenship and a Western construction of of, of statality? Um, and I'm actually using Western here, like, I mean, thinking of, 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 of Benedict Anderson and his, uh, well, probably one of his most important and somewhat overlooked contribution mm -hmm. uh, in, in imagined communities where he, he, uh, he claims and, and, and demonstrates that uh, the, um, the nation state's model, the, the European nation states were based on a model first developed in in, in Latin America, and that the, the Latin American Republican uh, states were actually the model of, for 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 the Western nation states. Um, so, considering that the sort of Peruvian uh, uh, Republican state would be. Uh, uh, this paradigmatic model of of a Western construct of, 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 of being in a community and being in a state, can we sort of uh, 
call this this rejection, uh, or could we understand this re rejection of, 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 of citizenship as a as a wider rejection or a wider conflict with a with a sort of Western condition or with a with a Western paradigm? Yes, uh, um, it's a complex uh, question. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't I don't I don't sure if if they are. Uh, rejecting rejecting uh, this uh, uh, the citizenship the citizenship as itself uh, as itself but rejecting some uh, uh, paternalist uh, ways no to 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 be under the 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 rules of the state no I mean they are creating they they are uh, creating a completely different social participation and maybe in a way this is a, a different uh, way to being yeah. a citizen you know and um, but how would you like to bring how would you define this movement in a, or like do you think that there is something particular in the post 89 context mm -hmm. that allows for these movements to take the shape that they, that they take, mm -hmm. and something that would make them substantially different from, let's say, different models of, of, of decolonization in Africa in the 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. that were also like trying to recapture or trying to, 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 to uh, reconcile in one way or another, I, I keep using this word which is totally wrong actually in this context, in, in this context but to to sort of like bring together a certain kind of like native dimension or indigenous dimension in the frameworks of, of some form of like Western Republican uh, model. I mean, I'm thinking here from like, you know, from, 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 uh, uh, from negritude to, to uh, more, more uh, to, 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 to completely failed projects like the Zairization project mm -hmm. in, in, in of, of Mobutu Sese Seko. Um, and those, can very well be read in a in a in, in a in a in a Cold War context. Mm -hmm. So, is there something in this post eighty nine post Cold War uh, reality that allows for these indigenous movements to take the shape that they actually do? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, for example, the 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 the, the crisis of the of the of the left thinking in a way. Uh, is is part of this uh, uh, indigenous uh, new insurrections rebellions because they they are not uh, associate with any orthodoxy party. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they they are they are free of of this uh, kind of uh, uh, former, you know, um, political you know, uh, ways to creating social demand and. Um, I think now also that they have a, a, a completely in, uh, new access to ways of communication. I mean, these are uh, uh, we're talking about people who yeah. who are traveling uh, uh, in Peru and they also have access to education. They they are like indigenous group in universities, you know, organized, and they they use uh, these uh, possibilities that they have to. To, to create a public debate, you know, in 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 in, in spaces that uh, three decades ago was almost impossible. I mean, not from themselves, you know, the, all the time was this uh, kind of representation of the of the of the party on or, or these um, social organizations that trying to talk about them, you know. But in this case, the situation is different because they are organized and they don't need uh, they don't need any 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 figure to talk for them. And uh, well, in, in Peru, it's a very particular uh, because when the when the after the eighties, after the war between the Shining Path and the state, we have a uh, 20 years of neoliberal democracy. Well, no, no democracy, sorry, neoliberal government. Fair Fujimori, one decade of dictatorship, 
terrible. And then in 2001, the return of the democracy. But they were uh, neoliberal uh, governments, uh, economical, political uh, policies. And and in in that uh, in in the in Fujimori's uh, government, there was a, a, a persecution of of the critical thinking in many ways. And now the the left thinking is uh, was like thinking, no, for the last uh, ten years. I think this is what, what I'm not saying that this is a good thing, but I'm saying that this is also related to. Uh, 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 this uh, new social group disengaged from the previous, uh, 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 pr from the former, yeah. uh, you know, uh, 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 yes, uh, political groups. Uh, it's, it's not a union group, you know, they are not yeah. unionists, they, they are, uh, it's, um, I don't know. Maybe the the, the fall. Uh, I mean, the, the the 1989 situation and and what happened after that in uh, are allowing us to 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 to, to think this uh, emergence. Um, also, in for example, uh, the sexual movement in, in in Latin America from the 80s were really really strong, and they. They had a lot of friction with the traditional parties all the time, and they are they were organizing uh, in autonomous group mm -hmm. but but now they have a different presence i mean just uh, three weeks ago in Argentina we have the the acceptance of the of yeah. the marriage same sex marriage same sex marriage exactly yeah. i mean this is okay. I, I can make a lot of uh, questioning about this too. But, but isn't this because there's a there's a critique, and you know you have this in Argentina, but you have like in a number of other of other Latin American countries, you have this uh, uh, same-sex legislation. Well, uh, either either allowing like civil unions or different other forms of of recognizing partnerships. Um, but I can bring this Just in uh, Mexico. In, in in Mexico City, but in you have like in in. Uruguay, Colombia, uh, Brazil recognizes partnerships that are oh. short of marriage, but yeah. uh, it's something that is stronger than in many Western European countries. Mm. Um, but I mean, a, a, a critique to, or, or sort of like a counter argument to sort of an, an idealizing this would be that this is somehow the project of an elite yeah. okay. that mm -hmm. perceives this as 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 a, as a condition. And there's a very easy um, token to sort of like claim their westernization through mm -hmm. this. Yeah. And especially in countries in profoundly homophobic societies like, mm -hmm. like, like Mexico or, or well, Colombia to a, to a lesser extent, but also yeah. in where, where, where uh, the sort of like majority of the people and many of the indigenous group yeah. actually have a, yeah. a different position to yeah. this. This is actually the, 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 the project of a yeah, many times white, uh, um, Western-looking, Western-aspiring. Uh, yeah, uh, um, yeah you, you're right about it. I mean, this is not an example of how, how social and sexual movements are organizing themselves. No, not at all. Uh, no, not at all. Um, I, I, for example, I, I was talking about this uh, Museo Travesti del Perú, who is, uh, yeah. uh, which is a questioning very strong uh, of of this uh, uh, state nation, no Peruvian state nation. But I, w I was just thinking in, in this uh, same-sex marriage because m maybe comfort, I mean, uh, just uh, like putting on the table some question ab about how this um, legality, uh, how, how this um, po policy has been constructed, uh, and, and we're talking about Western legality, no? you know, yeah. and has been constructing uh, under the 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 rejection of of some uh, of, of, of some um, um, or, yes of, of some sexual options or, or social options you know and, and it is it is the discussion about how this uh, legal framework was creating and how we are are we dealing with this which is important for me but yes you're right I mean this is part of the of the lead project and and the 
and the and, and the demands of, of I mean are, are, are more I mean the, the the real demands are more deeper than just approve this thing in the Congress is is yes. Mm. You mentioned earlier uh, the museum as a as a hegemonic uh, Western institution, and I wanted to ask you about uh, well to also to bring the discussion on more on more practical terms a bit uh, about a project that in which you're or in a, in a, in a in a mission again that you're involved with several other people, which is to uh, try to uh, rescue some of the archives existing in Latin America that are uh, under very precarious conditions. So trying to sort of uh, make them public on one hand, but also to avoid having them bought and shipped over to big mm -hmm. Western museums. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can talk more about that. You're referring to the Red Conceptualism of the Sur. Okay, yes. Well, uh, yes, we, I mean, we, we are like a platform of, of, of researchers, artists, art historians, um, sociologists. Are, uh, there's a, a, a big spectrum of people working on this. Um, we, we were working since 2007 uh, trying to, trying to, uh, to, 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 to create a public discussion about how these remnants, these, these uh, archives, these uh, legacies of some radical experiences from the, sex, from the 60s onwards uh, has, has been um, in danger to lose you know, beca because of, uh, uh, we're focusing at the beginning on um, different archives uh, and artists who, who are the, the, what is the word, the, the owner, you know, the custodio, the custody of, of these archives, and, and trying to, trying to, um, I mean, the, the situation is that, um, in the in the last decade, there is a a, a, a new interest from universities and institutions to buy archives, you no, know, from Latin American yeah. artists, and we thought that it is important, very very important, to keep these archives and to, to work with them in our in our context in our countries, and. We, we, one of our first uh, actions was uh, work with uh, Clemente Padin, who is an Uruguayan poet uh, and editor working from the mid 60s. And uh, I mean, uh, and we, we, uh, we created like a group uh, uh, working with him uh, to, to, to do, to, to make a public archive. Uh, with his material, he was, uh, uh, I mean, some private collect collector offered him to buy his, his archive, and that was like the beginning of, of this uh, war with him, uh, that, that was in 2008, and now we're finally close to, to, to create that. We're working with a public university in Montevideo, and, uh, and we're hoping to open this uh, archive next year, but now we have the I mean the the funds and 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 the and the infrastructure you know, to 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 put these materials uh, to to keep it safe and to also to to invite some people some researchers local researchers to work in this archive but this is just a uh, part of the of our work as 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 a network. I, I told you because you you talk about to 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 rescue these materials and stuff. Uh, but uh, we are working uh, in, in different research projects. Uh, for example, we have uh, one, one of the projects that we have now is a critical writing. It's related to, um, to, to, to research about uh, some uh, uh, artists or, or theoreticians in, in Latin America you know, that produce critical theory or critical thinking between the 60s and 80s, one of these is uh, Juan Acha, who is a Peruvian-Mexican theoretician, also uh, Brazilian curator Walter Zanini, 
or the Brazilian uh, art critic and curator Federico Moraes, who lives in Rio de Janeiro. Yes. Uh, also with Tizio Escobar, we are doing the same, and with Argentinian artist Roberto Jacobi, for example. Also with Argentinian uh, theoretician Oscar Masota. Uh, but uh, Anna Longoni did a lot of work about this, and uh, there is a, now a compilation about his writing from the 60s and early 70s. Um, and we have also this kind of uh, transversal research project of uh, how in, in the dictatorship context, uh, artists create uh, networks to resist to the oppression and the, and the political persecution. Uh, for example, under the context of the Plan Condor, who was a, like a program implemented by the right-wing right -wing military dictatorships uh, in Chile, Uruguay, Brazil, Argentina to identify uh, left-wing artists and activists and militants and to disappear them, to, to, I mean, to, to capture them. Uh, a group of artists uh, create a male art, male art network uh, and this, uh, using uh, elements from visual poetry but also using the, the, I mean, uh, uh, um, like regular objects to 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 make circul to 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 make us a circulation of the public demands and the social demands and the and the persecution and it was really amazing because, for example, one of these uh, male art networks connected with uh, East Europe just during the 60s and yeah. 70s. And it was a very strong connection. I, I went to Budapest in January and in a in to a art pool. To art pool, exactly. And it was amazing because there there is one room with Latin American pieces, you know, send it from from Argentina, from Brazil, from Uruguay. Um, there's like it's it's amazing, like there are like three boxes full of uh mails, I mean posts um, and objects send it by Edgardo Antonio Vigo from Argentina, or for Clemente Padin in Uruguay, or for Paulo Bruschi from Brazil, and talking about the, this social situation, no? and how there was this kind of uh, particular dialogue, how uh, artists during the right-wing dictatorship were dealing with political oppression, at the same time with the Eastern Europe artists were dealing with the communist regime and their own, their own, their own particular repression. And I think th this is one of the most uh, inter interesting mm -hmm. projects that we have now because it's an it's a, it's a opportunity to, to, to put important questions about h how the, the politics works, you know, and and how can create uh, unexpected, unexpected uh, uh, ways of 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 of, re of revolt, no of revolt in the in the public sphere uh, when when Clemente Padin wa was imprisoned in in late seventies, for example, there was a, a huge a huge protest in all over the world just by mail, you know. And a lot of actions in different in different countries in Europe and in America, uh, talking about the atrocities of the Uruguayan uh, military dictatorship. And I think this connection hasn't been uh, discussed until now. And mm -hmm. I mean, this, uh, there is a lot of uh, overlooked aspect of the encounter of art and politics, or, or, or how art and politics is, is exchange their strategies that we are trying to deal with uh, as, a, as a group. And, and we are also discussing a lot about how to, 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 to create this kind of experimental institutions no? related to archives, but also related to o other stuff. And I mean, it's, it's a work in progress. and. We are now organizing a, 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 a seminar at Reina Sofia in November, in, in next November. 
uh, about, about an, an overlook uh, mark in the in the present uh, bicentenary celebrations and of the yeah 200 of years of, of independence ex exactly and, and one of our of our points of uh, important point of discussion in this event, event a seminar that we are organizing now is is the is uh, what happened with the uh, ITN, ITN revolution. No, uh, the ITN revolution was the first revolution in, in, in Latin America and the Caribbean. The was a, a revolt led by the former slave, you no, know, yeah. from Afro African descent. And in the last decade of the 18th century, it was at the same time of the French on the of the with the French Revolution, it was at the same time. And the independence was declared in uh, 1804, 1804, yeah. yeah. Uh, this was, I mean, the, the, the first and the most radical revolution because, and this is really interesting, in, in the, in the was led by, by black uh, former slaves and in the Article 14 of the Haitian Constitution, uh, the sentence was um, uh, like since now uh, c every citizen should know only uh, shall fence forward know only by the generic appellation of blacks, uh, including also white women, um, um, Germans, um, Poles. And this is funny because this is part of the text, and and this uh, kind of af uh, uh, affirmation that we are all blacks now um, is really important because it's a uh, it makes clear that the for the Haitian revolutionaries uh, the the uh, the the black this idea was a uh, a political and not biological uh, condition. condition, exactly. Um, it's a way to deconstruct this kind of racist, racist structures that survives until now. Well, this is, uh, I mean, the, 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 the missing, you know, of this important mark of our history and the first uh, revolution uh, which is not remembered now when we are all celebrating this Creole uh, bicentenary, you yeah. know. Um, we think it's, a, it's, a, it's an important uh, way to, to think, you know, of, of yeah. it's, and this is part of, uh, of, our, of our seminar and, well, it's, it's, a, it's a work in progress that uh, we, are, we are very happy because we, we are um, now, uh, uh, see, seeing, uh, yes, I mean, I mean, this is a work in progress. Let, 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 let. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very important work indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Somehow, like to, to 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 end this, I wanted to ask you if you have any kind of um, well ideas or recommendations for perspectives that we may be overlooking in the former West project, and we should actually like take into account. If you have any kind of um, such suggestions for us, well, that's a tough question. Oh, recommendations. Well, I I think that uh, addressing more, more uh, discussion from from Latin America perspective will be really rich. For 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 what you are trying to deal with now, uh, this uh, the the itinerary of the Marxist programs uh, in well the how how the how for example the, the the impact of the Berlin Wall was in in some of the countries, but but. I'm pretty sure that every country has their own Berlin consequence of yeah, the Berlin exactly. Wall and their yeah. own Berlin Wall that fell. Yeah, their own Berlin Wall fell. I mean, I guess for 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 Peru, our, 
I mean the, the, the situation of the of the of the war of the Chinese against the state. It was the, the final of the socialist utopia. No no after that nobody wants to hear any more about communism or Marxism or anything related to left thinking because it was immediately associated with violence, with destruction, with genocide. And that's, that was very, very hard to deal with, especially in the 90s with a dictatorship under us. Uh, yes. And well, but I mean, one of the, the recommendations, well, it's not a recommendation, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, uh, but will be really, really rich for, 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 where you, for what you are trying to, to do now. Mm. You you have also this uh, one part of the one of the part of your project is uh, is a uh, research about exhibitions, right? It's yes, uh, exactly. It's trying to look at how the developments that are well that we're interested in in the project have been reflected in and in 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 in, in uh, different exhibitions in the last twenty years and through the development of, of, of the format of exhibition making uh, uh, in this period. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is something that would come under this label, the history of exhibitions. So yeah. it's like trying to look at this, at the, the specific means uh, of, of, of producing knowledge and intellectual content through, through, through exhibitions mm -hmm. in, in, in trying to look at the, the issues of former West. Mm -hmm. Well, I, th I think it is a very interesting, yeah, I think it's a very important um, part of, of this yeah. discussion, of course. And, and uh, I'm sure that you're planning to um, to include a, a broader, I mean, perspective That's what of we're no? busy with, yeah. yes. From, uh, I mean, from Africa, from Asia, I guess, uh, Oakville, as Congress, talk a bit about this, about the, the importance to Yes, to, to expand the, this uh, discussion, but you had you had a, a, a very important yes, este, like at the beginning. So it's it's, um, it's interesting. Sorry, I, w I interrupt you. you no. Okay. So. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to add um, that maybe you thought about and did not come out, come up in the in the normal flow of of the conversation? Well, not now. So sorry for my bad English. No, but it's, 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 it's <laughs> good. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs>